friends over on YouTube, good to see you. I want to do a Q&A with you during this quarantine. It's important to talk about your goals, talk about keto, talk about fasting. So the reason I'm live with you right now is because this is your opportunity here to ask me any questions you have about keto, about fasting, about health, and I'm going to do my best to provide you with the best answer so you could continue getting results during the quarantine. Right now, more than ever, it's important to focus on our health. I think that's one of the positive things that's coming out of, in the world right now is that people are understanding that your health is your true wealth. You know, and I wanna take this opportunity, if you're brand new to the channel, my name is Ben Azadi. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. I'm a best-selling author of three books. And here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. Every Wednesday, at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live with you on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and I do Q&A. This is your opportunity to get some coaching from me. This is your opportunity to ask me any questions. So I, I encourage you right now, start typing in your questions in the chat box, and I'm gonna get to as many as possible as I can get to. Um, and let me answer some questions right now that are coming in here. Hey, Kim, Kim says different strategies for over 50 postmenopausal females for keto, like more protein, etc. Yeah, Kim, so when it comes to protein, there are two periods of your life that you wanna have more protein, actually three. You wanna have more protein during the first 28 days of getting keto adapted. And I, I teach this in detail in my Keto Camp Academy during my first pillar. The reason is because when you're transitioning to burning fat from burning sugar, you might have a lot of sugar cravings, you might have some carb cravings, and it might be very difficult to get to, especially if your willpower, your willpower reserves are depleted because of, well, stress that's going on in the world. So when you have more protein, you activate certain satiety hormones and chemical messengers in the body, like cholecystokinine, and it helps your body feel more full. So protein does satiate you. I do recommend having more protein the first 28 days starting Keto. That's the first time you want to have more protein. The second time you want to have more protein is after the age of about 60 years old, you want to increase your protein intake and before the ages of 21 years old because you're still in a growth phase. So here are the general recommendations for protein. If you fall into the category of uh, 21 years old to about 60 years old, you want to consume about 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per lean body weight. So you gotta calculate your lean body weight and there's free tools on Google, Dr. Google, that you can do to do so. So you take your lean body weight and 0.6 to 0.8 is what you wanna have in grams per day. That's the general rule of thumb. If you're over the age of 60 or under the age of 21, you wanna increase that to around one gram per lean body weight, per pound of lean body weight. That's one consideration right there. Now, what else came to answer your question? You're over the age of 50. Well, you wanna make sure you are doing things, you're having hormone building days. You're having days where you're doing, you're eating foods that are helping your body, helping your body convert specific hormones like estrogen and progesterone. These are hormones that typically deplete as you get older, especially over the age of 50. So I would have periods of, uh, out of the week, so one day out of the week, two days out of the week, where you have what I call a keto flex day, you have a, a feast day, and Dr. Mindy Peltz, my colleague, talks about this a lot. She's been on my podcast so, uh, uh, once and on my YouTube channel uh, several times. But have a day or two out of the week where you're having these hormone building days. What does that mean? You're having about 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbohydrates. You are having yam, yuca, sweet potato, citrus fruits. These actually have been shown to make those hormonal conversions. So you'll feel a lot better doing that. And then outside of that, you're doing keto and fasting. So I teach this in my academy, four ways to do this, but that's an example for you, Kim. Hope that was helpful. Okay, what other questions are on here? Well, before I get to these questions, please let me know where you're watching from on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up button on Facebook, hit the heart button on Instagram, hit the heart button. And if you haven't let me know where you're watching from yet, please let me know down below. Hey, Laura says, my stalker from Texas. Good to see you live on here. Erica says, I have no gallbladder. What can I do about it? Supplements. Great question, Erica. You know, 
That's one of the most common questions that I have received since uh, I've been teaching keto since 2013 is how do I do keto without a gallbladder or how do I do keto with a sluggish gallbladder? I have great news for you. It can be done, okay? I have a video on my YouTube channel, five easy steps to following keto without a gallbladder, but I'll share some of those tips for you right now. First thing we wanna do, we want to, this is the only time I'm gonna recommend this, we wanna have small portion control meals throughout the day for the first 30 days doing keto without a gallbladder. We wanna give your liver some time to adjust picking up the work for that missing gallbladder. So you have smaller meals, so you're spreading out your fats, maybe you're having four or five smaller keto meals throughout the day. And supplement wise, ox bile is fantastic for somebody who has trouble digesting fat and has no gallbladder. So if you go to ketocampsupplements.com, ketocampsupplements.com, and type in uh, systemic formulas, D-digest, that has great ox bile in it. You also wanna increase certain bitters. Bitters are better, especially if you don't have a gallbladder. So you wanna make sure you're having arugula, arugula, ginger, ginger tea, dandelion greens, dandelion tea, even some organic shade grown coffee can help. Um, you also wanna make sure, artichoke. Artichoke is a powerhouse uh, of fiber and it helps stimulate bile and also apple cider vinegar. There's some more things to it, so go watch that video on my YouTube channel on five ways to do keto without a gallbladder. Tierney, good to see you in the house. We have some Keto Camp Academy members, and Lisa, another Keto Camp Academy member. LA in the house, Pennsylvania in the house. We have the Dutch uh, Caribbean in the house, awesome. What do you think about lazy keto? Um, I think it's important to do the best you can with what you've got. Something I don't make the, an exception for are the vegetable oils. So, <laughs> uh, Jessica, I see you. So, what I mean by that is this. If I had to pick between consuming a whole bunch of sugar and even artificial sweeteners or eating inflammatory oils, I would choose the sugars and the artificial sweeteners because I don't make an exception with vegetable oils. On average, when you consume these toxic vegetable oils, they stay around your cell membranes, creating inflammation on average for 132 days. All right, so these vegetable oils are super toxic. What are they? I'm sure you're asking. Canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil. These are toxic to the body. So lazy keto can be okay as long as you're avoiding that and you're doing the best you can. The healthier oils, avocado oil, um, sunflower oil can be okay if it's cold processed or inorganic. Uh, I like grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, coconut oil, olive oil. Those are much, much better. Um, so I'm a big fan of doing the best you can. But with that being said, our goal here at Keto Camp is not weight loss, it's not chasing ketones, it's chasing results. So the goal here is to reduce inflammation. Every video I have in my Keto Camp Academy, there's over 167 videos in my academy that you cannot find anywhere else, and every single video is designed to teach your body to reduce inflammation, because when you do that, your symptoms go away as a side effect, okay? Whether that symptom is weight gain, weight loss resistance, fatigue, brain fog, autoimmune, when you focus on cause, inflammation, that goes away as a side effect. Grapeseed oil is one of the bad ones unless it is uh, organic cold processed. Hey, Kim in California. All right, why do people say that keto is not sustainable, says Maribel. Maribel. Well, I'm probably one of those people that, that says that, um, actually, as a surprise, as somebody who loves keto. I think keto is fantastic. I, I believe and I know that out of the 70 trillion cells in the body, it can only choose sugar or fat, and we, design, we are designed to burn fat. If you study ancient culture, every culture, meaning all your ancestors, in the history of this world, they were in ketosis for a period of time because of their environment, because keto is not a diet. Keto is a metabolic process that has been around since humans have been around. So I also know this, Maribel and everybody else, our ancestors also got out of ketosis whenever they found fruit, whenever they found sugar, whenever they found honey. So I think keto is great. I don't think it's healthy long-term. 
Uh, I, I know that's a little bit different than what a lot of keto people teach. So that's where keto flexing comes into play. Uh, I teach keto flexing in my academy. So I think we should be burning fat most of the time, but I believe health is that metabolic flexibility, right? To go back and forth from burning fat to burning sugar without a hiccup, but as long as we're burning fat most of the time, that's where we're going to thrive, feel good, burn fat, and live a long, healthy life. Here are some other things, other reasons why I believe keto is the preferred fuel source. Did you know that when you were a baby, and if you were breastfed as a baby, you were in ketosis, because guess what? Breast milk has saturated fat, and it has cholesterol, and it helps that baby the development of the brain grow because the brain is about 80% fat. So we're designed to burn fat for fuel. The thing is, most people are sugar burners. When I was obese, when I weighed 80 pounds heavier than you see today, I was a sugar burner. Liliana, good to see you. Yeah, fruits are great for a flex day. Exactly, exactly. So what other questions are on here? Let's see, let's see, let me just scroll up. Hey Jim, good to see you, another Keto Camp Academy member. Nancy says, Thank you, Ben, for your guidance and enthusiasm. I've been doing intermittent fasting and keto-ish for six months now, loving it. Opinion on needing to vary my routine. Do you feel it's important to mix up 20-hour intermittent fasting and foods? I like routine. Yeah, great question, uh, Nancy. So I think it's, oh, it's important to always mix up your routine, your fasting schedule, the keto foods you're eating, because everything in nature is cyclical. And that's actually how I teach rotating supplements as well. Everything in nature is cyclical. When you look at, for example, uh, a great personal trainer, if you've ever worked with a great fitness coach or personal trainer, by the way, I used to be one of them. I, I was a personal trainer and, and the owner of a CrossFit gym, but what do they do? They always mix up their clients' workouts. Never the same workout. And why do they do that? Because it always keeps the body guessing. It gets them results. So here's my point. I know you like routine. I do too, but it's important to mix up your fasting schedule, to get in and out of ketosis, to change the keto foods you're eating. When you do that, you create adaptation in the body, and guess what happens when you force adaptation? Good cells get stronger, bad cells do not adapt, okay? So that's the key to longevity. Uh, longevity excuse me. Laura Painter in the house, another Keto Camp Academy member, good to see you, Laura. Total carbs or net carbs? Hey, Gabby, Gabby, good to see you on here. I teach net carbs in the academy, um, so if you don't know what that is, keto campers, net carbs are your total carbs minus you subtract your fiber. That's the way I teach it, but I, I don't think you can go wrong either way. Net carbs gives you a little bit more room to work with. Lynn, what's up, Lynn? We have a super camper in the house. By the way, a lot of this information can be found in my best-selling book, The Fasting Cheat Sheet, which if you want to get this for free, uh, digital download, go to... Um, fastingcheatsheet.com, click down below and you can get it. Margo is in the house, another Keto Camp Academy member, good to see you. Heavy whipping cream, I love it, as long as it's organic, I think it's fine. Connecticut in the house, can you explain keto flexing, never heard of it? Yes, absolutely, Amy, let me explain that for you. So keto flexing, in my Keto Camp Academy, I have four pillars to helping you master keto and fasting long term. The first pillar, is keto adaptation, meaning in 28 days, I can teach you and teach all 70 trillion cells in your body to burn fat instead of sugar. And I do this without the keto flu, without brain fog, without a lot of the side effects that people post about, uh, about keto. In fact, out of the 400 plus people that have gone through my academy in the last few months, not one of them has experienced the keto flu. Because when you do it the right way, the body will adapt. So my first pillar is a 28-day adaptation pillar where we do keto and then we start pairing fasting, intermittent fasting right after that. The second pillar, we start experimenting with OMAD and changing our fasting schedule up to create more of a variation, which is my fast pillar. So we have adapt, fast. And then the third pillar is my phase pillar where we go deep into ketosis. We might be even doing a little bit of some carnivore here, but we force the body to burn fat and only fat. Then we have earned the badge to start keto flexing, which is my fourth pillar. Keto flexing is a way to get all the benefits of keto and fasting long term because we know when you stay in ketosis too long, a lot of things, a lot of a couple problems can happen. The thyroid uh, T4 to T3 conversion can slow down. The body will actually increase 
um, holding on to fat because the body wants to preserve its only fuel source, which is fat. So when you throw in a flex day, so what is a flex day? I teach it in detail in my academy, but what is a flex day? It's having one day out of the week for some people where you get out of ketosis, ketosis intentionally. You have 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbohydrates, you have more protein, you, you do no fasting, and you are strategically getting yourself out of ketosis. And if you've done it the right way, the way that I teach you structured in the academy, then by the next day you'll be right back into ketosis. And that keto camper is what metabolic flexibility is about. That's the way I believe we were designed to live. And when you achieve that, you feel great. You could actually enjoy yourself and go to events and, well, not right now, but you could actually enjoy yourself and do the things you want to do without being so restrictive. So I'm going to get to some more questions here before I do. Please hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. It really makes a big difference for this to be shown to more people. So if you're getting any value from this, please hit the thumbs up button and give me some hearts on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I love the flex days as well. Hey, Dan, so how long did it take for me to lose my 80 pounds? It took nine months. Uh, that was back in 2008, 2009. It took nine months for me to go from 250 pounds. That's how much I used to weigh. And I was obese for most of my life. And in nine months, I went down to 170 pounds. And you know what? It all started with taking responsibility. And I talk about this in my book. My life changed the moment I accepted responsibility for my health, or I should say my lack thereof health. Up until that point, I was blaming everyone and everything for my issues, for my problems. I was blaming my enabling family members. I was blaming the government, I was blaming my genetics, my slow metabolism, but the only person responsible was me. I took responsibility, fast forward nine months, I went from 250 pounds down to 170 pounds, I went from 34% body fat down to 6% body fat, and I finally carved out a physical six pack. Now here's something to notate, very important, a physical six pack does not signify health. What I carved out was more important than that, I carved out a mental six pack. And I will take that over a physical six pack any day of the week. And that, my friends, is perfect health. Virtual hug to you right back, brother Jake. Good to see you on here. Donna, good to have you on here. So Amira says, I want to lose weight. Uh, I want to lose weight and I've been doing keto. However, I lost not much weight. Please help me. Okay, yes, I will help you. Oops, I will help you right now. So if anybody else has that challenge right now where you're struggling to lose weight on keto, here is what you wanna focus on. <laughs> this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but stop focusing on weight loss, start focusing on health. The next question is, what is health? Well, health means getting your inflammation down to a healthy level, okay? When you get healthy, then you'll lose weight. Okay, because we don't lose weight to get healthy, like Dr. Berg says, we get healthy to lose weight. So everything I teach in the academy, on my YouTube channel, on these live streams right now, is from a lens of reducing inflammation around your cells. When you do that, now your fat burning hormones could dock and connect to these receptor sites and burn fat. Now the nutrients you're eating, all the fat soluble vitamins on keto can get into your cells and you feel good. So what are some ways to do that? Healthy keto, staying away from inflammatory fats, practicing intermittent fasting, but fo focus on the foundations, okay? It's not necessarily about throwing in a whole bunch of supplements. I'm a big fan of rotating supplements and I use them and I teach that, but focus on the fundamentals, keto camper. Focus on your sleep. Most of your fat burning takes place during delta sleep. Focus on movement, move around. Take some walks on an empty, long walks on an empty stomach. Focus on the thoughts, your mindset. You know, out of the, the average person thinks 60,000 thoughts every single day. Most of those thoughts, 90% of them, are from the same, the same thoughts from yesterday, which are usually negative. And when you have negative thoughts, when you're watching CNN, AKA constant negative news, when you're watching mainstream media, you know what's gonna happen? that negativity will sink into your subconscious mind and that will create inflammation in your body. So step number one to fighting the coronavirus is throw your TV out of your balcony. <laughs>
or just don't turn on the mainstream media news. It'll drive you nuts. It will drive you nuts. So I would focus on the foundations, your sleep, your movement, your nutrition, and then you could start doing keto flexing. Look, if you, if anybody here on here right now is resonating with what I'm sharing here, if you like my work and you actually want coaching from me and you want structure and you want community, I encourage you to come into my Keto Camp Academy, okay? You get 165 plus videos all about this. You get two monthly coaching calls with me where you can ask me questions on, on a Zoom call. We also do weekly online workouts where you could join and actually lead you through a workout. We have exclusive live trainings. I'm actually doing two interviews today with Nora Gedgaudis, Dr. Don Klum, and I'm live streaming this for the Keto Campers. And you get structure and you get community. We have an amazing community in there. So if you wanna learn more about that, I encourage you to get signed up for a free seven day trial to give it a try. Go to ketocampacademy.com and you'll see there is an option for a seven day trial. And there's an option to do the whole year with six months free as well if you wanna be an action taker. But I'd love to show you the way. I'm gonna take a sip of water and then I'll answer some more questions. Please hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. Thank you, I'm glad you like the haircut. Thank, you know, when the barbershop is closed, you get your barbershop to come to you. <laughs> so he actually came over on Monday and gave me a nice cut here. William, thank you, brother, I appreciate that. And Carrie, thanks for watching in London, Ontario. Okay, what other questions you said? Diane, hey Diane, you said Delta Sleep. Aura measures REM, Delta Sleep, and light. What is Delta Sleep? Great question. So, we have different cycles of sleep, different stages of sleep that we enter, and they're all important. Arguably, Delta Sleep, which is stage four sleep, might be the most important one because what happens during Delta Sleep, which is deep restorative sleep, your brain actually shrinks in size and then you have like this uh, dishwasher fluid that goes over your brain and it flushes out toxins, goes into the lymphatic system and your body deals with it. That happens during Delta sleep. But also in regards to fat burning, most of your fat burning hormones, we know there's at least eight fat burning hormones in the body, they're activated during Delta sleep. Your body's burning fat, your body's flushing out toxins, your body's doing a lot of repair. Okay, so you're not necessarily burning fat during that workout, you're doing it at night. Then we have REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement. That's also important. It'll help with memory uh, and brain fog. So yeah, Aura, which is the ring that I have here, uh, it's a sleep tracker, gives you that whole, all that data. If I wasn't using my phone here, I'd show you my data right now. Um, I had like a 79 sleep score last night, which is not that great, it's not that bad. But my readiness score was 87. I got about two and a half hours of deep sleep. My REM sleep was not that optimal. That's why my score wasn't great. Okay, hope that was helpful. How do you get Delta sleep? Yeah, that's a good question now. Well, there's a few things. I, I do have a book, let me show it to you. I do have a best-selling book all about sleep called The Power of Sleep. You can get it on Amazon. Oops, you can get it on Amazon today. Um, it's a five chapters all about sleep, but I'll share some tips with you right now. By the way, if you're in the academy, you get this for free. Um, so some things you can do, make sure your bedroom is cold and dark. Studies show 62 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit is where most participants get that deep delta sleep. So 62 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit, very, very cold. Um, make sure their bedroom is dark as possible. You don't want any lights from your alarm clock, from your phone. You don't want that because whenever you have light touching your eye or your skin, it'll stimulate a cortisol production. And cortisol has an inverted relationship with melatonin. Melatonin is going to help you get deep sleep, not cortisol. But when you stimulate cortisol from light exposure at night or watching the news or any kind of stimulation, melatonin will plummet. But when you have a dark room and a cold room, all of a sudden you get that balance in your favor. Uh, melatonin goes up, cortisol goes down. You can also do this. You can try taking a, 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 warm, a warm to hot shower about an hour before bed. That has been shown to relax somebody. You could drink banana tea. You could drink chamomile tea, you could take CBD oil. So something that I have been experimenting with myself and a lot of my clients who have trouble sleeping, there's two things you can take that I highly recommend to help with deep sleep and restorative sleep and fat burning sleep. Number one, Dr. Phillips CBD. Look, not all CBD is equal. Most of it, 98% out there is crap. 
Dr. Phillips CBD, I trust, I use, I love, and I actually have an exclusive coupon for you all. So I would use half a dropper personally on before bed. I do it every night. That helps with sleep. Um, go to drphillipscbd.com slash keto camp for 15% off. drphillipscbd.com slash keto camp for 15% off. I also take sometimes a supplement called DREM, D-R-E-M, from Systemic Formulas. That's fantastic for sleep. You can find that over at ketocampsupplements.com. I hope that answered your question. I'm glad that helped uh, Belinda. By the way, if you're having trouble with insomnia, there I know the perfect person to help you with it. Go check him out, his name is Devin Burke. If you go on my YouTube channel, on Keto Camp YouTube, and on the search bar, just type in Devin Burke. I have some information with him. Also, just type his name in the uh, YouTube search bar. He is a master at helping those overcome insomnia. In fact, last year, my girlfriend Natasha went through a, um, a stressful period of life where her mom was in the hospital, and it actually it caused, it caused acute insomnia for her for, for 30 days. And Devin actually worked with her to help her restore uh, and get rid of that and, and prevent that acute insomnia from going into chronic insomnia. Thumbs up if you're getting value from this, please, here on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to answer a few more and then I'm going to go get in a fasted workout. And then I have my interview with Dr. Don Klum and with um, Nora Gedgaudis. Thank you, Kimberly. Good to see you on here. You're amazing. Hey, Zippor, good to see you as well. You are amazing. We have a lot of keto campers in the house. Okay, what questions did I miss here? Why is sea salt so important for hydration? I thought salt dehydrates. Can you clarify on this? Well, Crystal, salt, table salt will dehydrate you and make you retain water, but sea salt has these trace minerals in it, electrolytes. So for example, I always have this Redmond's Real Salt uh, on my desk and I just like, I do it right now. I just throw it on my hand here, take a shot because I'm getting, um, I'm losing minerals and electrolytes when I'm in ketosis, which I am right now. So if you look at a quality salt, like Redmond's Real Salt, you're going to see that there's 60 plus trace minerals and it's unrefined. So this is actually giving your body um, electrolytes. It's giving your cells the minerals to hydrate itself. But when you have table salt, like iod iod iodized, iodinized, I can't even say that word, table salt will deplete that. It's not, it's refined. We don't want refined, we want unrefined. So that's how it does it. And keep in mind that when you transition to burning fat from burning sugar, your body, your kidneys release a lot of excess water weight. I talk about this in the academy. So that feel, that's awesome because you're gonna feel lighter, you're gonna look uh, lighter, but you're also gonna lose a lot of electrolytes. So I always say increase the salt intake. And if you drink coffee, which I do, you also lose more electrolytes. So throw in some sea salt with your coffee. Yeah, Barbara, of course you're amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you in my Keto Camp Academy and in my inner circle. You're a, an action taker. So yes, you are amazing. All right, well, I'm gonna answer a few more questions here. Uh, I really appreciate all of you. There's about uh, 100 people here on YouTube, um, about 20 people here on Facebook, and 10 on Instagram. What is the perfect time to fast for autophagy? Well, it really depends on your goals and your schedule. There's, I haven't really seen concrete research on it, but autophagy, for most people, I would think starts around the 16, 18 hour mark. So I think, to answer your question, for most people, I like an 18-6 schedule on most days with a 24-hour autophagy fast once per week. What does that mean? That means most days you're going every single day for 18 hours in a fasted state. You're having some water, some sea salt, and then you're eating during a six-hour window. Or you're feasting during a six-hour window. So what that would look like on your calendar would be 12 to 6 p.m. you feast. And then you fast outside of that. And then if you throw in a 24 hour fast once per week, like a dinner to dinner type of thing, you get even more autophagy. And hey, you could always do, it, do a block fast if you know what you're doing in the future to get even more autophagy. Somebody who has more weight, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, they could, get, they could do more fasting and they, they could do more autophagy. But we wanna, we wanna understand this. This is a very important coaching note. So if you're taking notes or if you're not paying attention, 
pay attention to at least this part right here because it's so important to understand this. The human body has two pathways. We have mTOR and we have autophagy. mTOR stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. All you need to know is that mTOR stimulates growth. mTOR is anabolic. So when you hear mTOR, think of bodybuilders, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what mTOR is doing. mTOR is not the bad guy, unless you're always stimulating mTOR, like bodybuilders, eating every two to three hours, eating a whole bunch of protein, eating right before bed, waking up in the middle of the night to eat, like bodybuilders, they're always an mTOR. Well, is it a coincidence that the average bodybuilder dies 12 years younger than the average person? No, it's not because they're constantly getting mTOR, never getting the opposite of mTOR, which is autophagy. Autophagy is catabolic, but it's catabolic in a good way. The body is so stinking smart, it is so sophisticated that when you're not eating food, it needs to get energy from somewhere. So it starts to seek out damaged cells, damaged protein, damaged mitochondria, starts to clean out that cell. Think of Pac-Man going within your cells, cleaning it out. And if your body has determined a cell cannot be repaired and cleaned out because it's just these senescent zombie cell, it signals apoptosis, gets rid of that cell, and produces a stem cell for a healthier cell. So that's what autophagy is. It's opposing mTOR. You might be saying, don't we want all the autophagy? No, because when you are getting too much autophagy, it's too catabolic. When your body's done eating the bad stuff, it's going to get, need to get energy, energy from somewhere. So it goes for the good stuff. There is a art to this autophagy mTOR balance. And this is exactly what I teach in my Keto Camp Academy. If you wanna master this art of mTOR versus autophagy, so feast famine, I encourage you to go to ketocampacademy.com and get into the membership for, for seven days for free. And you could master keto and fasting and autophagy and mTOR. So that is the difference between autophagy and mTOR right there. I'm gonna answer a couple more questions here. Ernie says, what do you do when you start losing too much weight on keto? I find it hard to eat carbs anymore. If, you, if, if you're having trouble putting on healthy weight, it's usually the gut. The gut's not able to assimilate the nutrients. So you want to make sure you're doing things to heal the gut. Uh, there's some things you can do to help close the tight junctions. There's a great product called Ion, Ion from Dr. Zach Bush, that you can take couple tablespoons a day, that'll help close your tight junctions. And when you're eating your keto foods, you can start assimilating more of those foods to help you get back some, uh, some healthy weight. So if you go to ketocampsupplements.com and just type in ION, you could get that. I think they're doing a special today for 15% off. I think I saw it there. So I would do that and then make sure you're getting good sleep, make sure you're lifting some weights and you're maybe eating some more protein and that'll prevent the excessive weight loss when you start keto. Patricia says, why is my sugar so high after I eat a meal to get out of ketosis? Usually when fasting and keto is 85 and after a carb meal is 185. Well, it could mean a couple things, Patricia. It could mean number one, you might have some insulin resistance or you're just eating um, the carbs are processed carbs, they're starchy carbs. I'm, I'm not sure if they are, but I would eat more of the healthier carbs. So the cruciferous vegetables, the green leafy vegetables, uh, some sweet potatoes. Um, but it's probably because of insulin resistance. That's my guess. And insulin resistance takes time. You might need to do more strict keto and not have the carbs for a period of time to really force your body to, re to reverse that insulin resistance. Is pink Himalayan sea salt the same as Redmond's? It's not the same, but I do like pink Himalayan sea salt as long as it's from a quality brand. Brenda says, I always learn so much on the live Q&A. Thank you so much. You are welcome, Brenda. I appreciate you. You're awesome. Kimberly, I don't think you saw my question above. For some reason, my fatty coffee broke my fast this morning and it normally doesn't. Do I continue with the rest of my 24 for today? Yeah, continue with it. You know, sometimes it'll be something else that, that caused your glucose to go up after fatty coffee and maybe not the fatty coffee. It could have been stress. Maybe you saw something on Facebook of something posting, somebody posting something political that you didn't really like. I don't know, but uh, yes, I would continue with your 24 schedule. 
Could you share what bottle of magnesium malate you suggest? I want to make sure I get the right brand. Yeah, Crystal, if you go to ketocampsupplements.com and type in uh, magnesium malate, you could see it. It's from um, True Cell, I think it's called True Cellular or um, Designs for Health. But if you go to ketocampsupplements.com, it's on there. I curated everything on that website. What percentage of deep sleep or minutes should you aim for? I think at least an hour and a half should be a good, if you can get two hours, even better. I got two and a half hours last night. Hi, from Canada, says Ellen, when is better, when is better exercise before you break your fast to build muscle, lo not losing weight, or after, and what to, what to eat after the first meal for building muscle? Okay, so you're saying Ellen wants to not necessarily lose weight, but build muscle, should you break your fast before you work out? I would, I would mix it up. Maybe one day you break the fast before you exercise, one day you don't, that variation is great. But keep in mind, your body increases human growth hormone, so it's gonna be hard for you to lose, uh, or to lose muscle during a fasted workout. You actually could build muscle. If you break the fast afterwards, break it with high quality protein. So a protein shake, bone broth, that would be fantastic. Uh, Ryan says, should you have a coffee in the morning if you're fasting to kickstart your digestive system? If you wanna get the most from a fast, I would recommend having just water and salt. Some people, however, can have coffee during a fast and not really get a glucose rise. So you could still get a lot of the benefits, a lot of the autophagy. So the only way to know is to test your glucose. Have your coffee, 30 minutes later, test your glucose again. If your glucose rises more than 30 points, then it's not, it's uh, breaking your fast, breaking the autophagy. That's how you know. I'm gonna answer one more question and then I'm done here. Please hit the thumbs up button if you've gotten any value from it already. And if you want to get my book, Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet for free, go to fastingcheatsheet.com. If you wanna get into the academy to get coaching from me, go to ketocampacademy.com. I'd love to see you in there. Will rum knock you out of ketosis? I know it's not good for me, it keeps me sane though. Rum will probably knock you out of ketosis, Laura. The body is gonna prioritize getting rid of that poison, which is alcohol, and not producing ketones. So I would suspect that yes, depends on how much you have. I like um, dry farm wines. If you're, I don't drink, but if, you were, if I was going to drink, it would be dry farm wines. They're like an organic keto wine. That's what I would do. Okay, hey, I wanna thank you all so much. If you watch the replay, by the way, if you're on here right now watching the replay, put hashtag replay. If you're watching, um, or if you haven't let me know where you're watching from, let me know, I'd love, I'll, I always love to hear that. I go live here on the Keto Camp YouTube channel, on Facebook, on Instagram, every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. So put it in your calendar. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell so you're notified. I hope you're well during this unique time in the world. I hope you're safe. I'm sending you love, I'm sending you gratitude. I am committed. I have taken a stand to show up for you every single day and educate and educate and share the light, share the abundance, share the love because in a dark world, when you show up as a, as a lightful person, if that's a word, you stand out even more. And I, when I show up like this and I give you permission to spread, to spread your light. So hold faith over fear. If I missed your question, I'm sorry. I apologize, hopefully I can get to it next week or if you join the academy, I can get to it in the academy on more of a personal level. Appreciate you all so much. Have an amazing rest of your day. Grateful that you spent part of your day with me and I'll see you uh, very soon.